Chapter 9 is going to be talking about probability. Um, you may have seen probability in a lot of different situations. Um, sometimes it's presented in a statistics kind of course. Um, you'll often see it um, show up in um, later parts of algebra even. Um, but probability is simply the likelihood of things happening. And so you see it presented and integrated a lot more into the curriculum at much younger grades than what it probably was when you were there. Um, and so you'll see um, simple probability things um, occurring in the grade school, um, and then they get more complex as you get towards the upper grade school and early junior high. So to start with 9.1, we're going to talk about how probabilities are determined. First of all, when we talk about an experiment here, we don't mean that it has to be like a science experiment. An experiment is simply an activity where we can see what happens, okay, where the results can be observed and recorded. An outcome is just the result of an experiment anything that could happen, anything that could occur. The sample space is the collection of all of the things that could occur, all of the different outcomes. And then an event is any subset of the sample space. So let me put a concrete picture to what all this language says. Let's say that you have an experiment where you're rolling a standard six-sided die. Okay, you're rolling a die. Then what is one outcome that could occur? one, right? You could roll the die and you could get a one. Okay, that would be an outcome. Um, if we wanted to list all of the outcomes, that would be a sample space. Sample spaces are written in curly braces, just like sets are, and we would list all of the outcomes that could occur, and in my example, it would look something like this, right? Standard six sided die. And then an event is any subset of the sample space. So maybe you do the event E where you list all the evens. Or maybe you do the event um, you know, P where you list all the primes, two, three, and five. Okay, so, so whatever it is, it's just a, some, some smaller collection of the sample space. Uh, and you can even have a event um, that is simply um, you know, rolling the number two. So maybe you have a, a game, right, where you're, when you roll the number two, something special happens. You get an extra turn, or you get to jump ahead twice as many places, something like that. So, and you could call it, we'll call this event A. So the events don't have to have a certain number of things in them. They just are any smaller collection, um, any subset of the original sample space. All right. The law of large numbers, this is Bernoulli's theorem, says that if an experiment is repeated a large number of times, then the probability approaches a fixed number. So when we talk about having a one-sixth chance of rolling a two on the die, what we mean is that over a large number of times when we roll that die, about one-sixth of the times it's going to come up two. Okay? But is it possible to roll the die 100 times and get no twos? Yeah, I mean, that, that happens, right? I mean, you've seen the families that have six girls. No boys, right? I mean, the, it's a 50-50 shot. There should be a boy in there somewhere, and it just didn't happen. Right, so this is a large number issue, right? If you're doing this for a huge, large number, eventually, yes, it's going to be about one-sixth of the rolls of the die that would be the number two, and so forth. The way we count probability or calculate probability is we look for the number of ways whatever we're interested in occurring is, and we divide it by the number of ways that any event could occur. So if you take a look at the example over here that I gave, this is my sample space. We could actually talk about the different um, probabilities for my events. And so let me do the probability of event E. So if I did the probability, well, I'll just keep it on this slide. If I do the probability of event E, I take the number of ways that event E can occur. So how many elements are there in event E? The outcomes, there are three. How many outcomes are in the sample space? Six. So this is one half probability. So it's a one half probability that something in event E, one of those outcomes will occur. Uh, we could do the same thing for A. What's the probability of event A? Well, how many outcomes are in the sample space, or in the A space? One. And how many are in the sample space? Six, so we have a probability of one-sixth of getting that number two. That's how we count probabilities. That, I mean, that's how we calculate them. Now, mutually exclusive events, and this is a, 
This is a very confusing concept because we're going to talk about two things that are very similar in their descriptions, but they are distinctly different. The first one is mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events are events that have no elements in common. In other words, that if you looked for the first event and you looked at the second event and you took their intersection, it's the empty set. Okay, so for those of you who've seen this notation before, this means something to you. If you didn't, let me go over it really quickly. These are two different sets. In this case, they're two different, uh, what do we call them over here, events. These are two different events, and this is the intersection of those events. And what we're saying is that they can have nothing in common. This notation means empty set. Okay, it means they have nothing in common. There's, there's nothing that they overlap in. Let's see if I want to give an example of that if I wrote anything down for us. Yeah, that would be an example with the, the dice example that I gave, yes. So if we did an example of an event being the even numbers and an event being the odd numbers, those two events are mutually exclusive because they don't have anything in common. If we used the ones that I gave before over here, E and P, those two are not mutually exclusive because the number two is both even and prime. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a good way to do an example real quick with my dice. Yeah. All right. Some basic theories about probability, or basic theorems, excuse me, about probability. If you have an event, any event A, and S is our sample space, then the probability of that event is between 0 and 1. So you might kind of associate this with um, when they predict on the weather channel, right? They always tell you a percentage chance something's going to rain. And the percentage has to be between 0 and 100%, right? And if you think about those numbers, 0% and 100%, you turn them into a number view, right, percentage into numbers like we were doing back in Chapter 7, that number will be between 0 and 1. That's what a probability is. It's the likelihood of something happens. You can't have a 200% chance of rain. You know, sometimes we think you can. <laughs> it's already raining, yes. <laughs> um, so when we're talking about um, probabilities, we're always finding probabilities that are between 0 and 1. You can only do that if they're disjoint. So disjoint in this equivalent is equivalent to saying mutually exclusive. They don't have anything in common. Right? I can't roll a die and get both a 3 and a 4 at the same time if I've got one die. It doesn't land on the edge. Right? We don't have any of that going on. So this only works, this description only works, this ability to separate it that way only works if the events are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Um, if the events A and B are mutually exclusive, which is what we were actually, asked, that's where I was headed, was that the, then if you want the union of the two events happening, it's the individual events added together. Okay, so in order to find the probability of event of rolling a three or a four, means that I can find the probability of rolling a three and add it to the probability of rolling a four. Now, that would not work if I used event E and P over here. What's the probability of event E? One half. What's the probability of event P? One half. The, the A was one sixth, Beth. Oh, let's look at P. The probability of event P is one half as well, right? So if I add one half and one half together, I get one. But there's a problem with that. What's the problem? One's not listed, and two is listed twice. Something got double counted, right? So that double counting messed things up. And that's the other theorem, theorem 9.5 down here at the bottom. No, it's not. I take it back. It's on the next page. Let me put it in right here first, and then I'll get to theorem 9.5 at the bottom. If you don't know if they're not, if they're not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A union B, it is the probability of A plus the probability of B, but you have to subtract off the double counting, which is the probability that they intersect. That, you can't even read that. Let's try that again. That's A intersect B. That upside down symbol is intersect symbol. So we'd have to throw out one of those twos, in other words. They intersect exactly one place, the number two, so we throw out one of the twos. The last theorem right here, theorem 9.5, and we'll stop with this one, says that if you have the probability of event A and you have the probability of event A complement, 
that notation again is coming back from chapter two in your uh, book from math one, that this is one. That is, if you take the probability the event will occur, press the probability that it won't occur, that's a 100% chance of that happening. I know, it's like earth shattering. Um, so one way to sort of talk about it in a way that's sort of a little bit more reasonable, and we do this all the time, is to say that the probability that event A happens is one minus the probability that it doesn't. Or you could say the probability of the event A complement happens is one minus the probability. That's an A down there. I can't put my A in there. Pretend I have something on my screen that doesn't allow me to write in that spot. So this is an A. Right here's an A. Um, right, so if the chances are that it's 30% chance it's going to rain today, what's the chance it's not? 70%. I mean, we, we use, use these facts all the time, right? Um, this is the glass half empty, half full thing, right? You just say, oh my goodness, I have a 30% chance that I'm going to fail this test, but I have a 70% chance I'm going to pass, right? We, we've got two ways of looking at it. All right. 